now we're going to get into, okay, now that we have the data displayed, how do we analyze it? So in AP stat, we are going to cuss and we are going to be BSers. This is what you're going to remember in order to get all the points on this type of question on the AP exam. So when it comes to how to describe data, you want to think cuss and BS. All right, so cuss and BS. Well, what do these all mean? The C stands for center. So you always want to describe the center of a distribution. And we'll get into what the center, how we measure the center on the next slide. Next, the U stands for unusual. So anything that's unusual about the data set, we want to tell the reader or the AP readers that we know it exists. We can see there's an outlier or we can see there's a gap. Next is the shape. So as we get all this data and we display it, what does it look like? What's the actual shape? What's the literal shape of the distribution? And then the spread. So how spread out is our data? Is it really concentrated in one place or is it pushed out and spread very far? So that's the four things you need to describe the distribution. But with the AP test, every single time you describe a distribution, A, they're going to ask you to be specific. And essentially what that means is they want you to use context. So what are we talking about in this problem? Because if you don't mention that in the problem, they're going to dock you a point and you can get at most a P instead of an E. Now you might be thinking, Mr. Durkin, what is an E? What is a P? We're going to break that down in future videos. So be specific, use context. And then the ER is just use comparing words. So it's not enough just to say the median of this is 12, the median of this distribution is 14. No, we need to compare. All right, so let's actually break down each of these letters a little bit more. All right, so the C. The C in cuss is for the center. Now, when we describe a distribution, there are two centers that we look at. First is the median. So the median is going to be the middle number when you order it from least to greatest. So if you have like one, two, three, four, five, the median is going to be three because it's the middle number in order from least to greatest. Now we get the median from box plots. Um, it's tough to get it from histograms, but we can kind of guess it. So box plot gives you the exact median. The other measure of center we use is what's called the mean. So the mean is the average. In statistic, we just call it the mean. But essentially, you add up all the data points and divide by how many there are. Again, this is all stuff you've probably learned before. But in AP stats, we actually apply it to statistics and to data. Now, you're going to see this weird little letter over here. Um, and what we call that is x bar. And that is how we denote mean in samples. So if you sampled 10 kids, found their average height, we would say x bar equals 5, 8. x bar is the way you display it. If on the AP exam you miss or you write the incorrect letter for mean, they will dock you points. So it's important that we know that. So again, the center of the distribution, we describe either using mean or median. So when you do your response in AP, on the AP test, you want to make sure you include one of those. Next, the U. So the U is for unusual. So anything that breaks from the norm in a distribution, we want to talk about in our response on the AP exam. So the first obvious one is, are there any outliers? So is there anything that is away from the data? For example, if you were surveying student heights, and most of the data was around 5'8", five, 5'10", five, but then Shaquille O'Neal walked in the door and it was set, he's 7'2". So he's an outlier. He's far away from the normal data set. If you see that on a distribution, you want to talk about it. The second thing is where are the peaks? So if there, let's say there's two peaks on the end, we want to talk about that. So we know that the reader knows that that's unusual. And last but not least is any gaps. So if you see a big gap in a distribution where there's no data, that's important to us as statisticians. We want to know that. And so we're going to um, want to talk about that. So unusual, outliers, peaks, gaps. Some AP teachers like to use SOCKS. So S-O-C-S. Instead of everything else is the same except for U and O are different. 
So they use outliers. I like to use unusual because there are some AP problems where they want you to talk about the gaps or the peaks in the distribution. So if I say socks, then you might not think to comment on the outliers, I'm sorry, or the, the gaps or the peaks. And I wanna make sure my students know to comment on those things. So we use cuss. Also, I think it's just a little bit easier to remember. All right, so next comes shape. So shape is gonna be an important part on how we take a look and describe data. So there are three main ones and they're located right here, but I put in a couple other just so we had, just in case it comes up on the AP exam, it doesn't really come up very often, but it is important to mention it just in case. So the first two are skewedness. So skewedness is when we have data concentrated on one side or the other of our distribution. Okay, and remember a distribution is just how we display data. So skewed right and skewed left, sometimes students get um, have a tough time thinking about which one is which. And the way I tell my students is, where is the tail of the distribution? If it's on the right-hand side, then the distribution is skewed to the right. If it's on the left-hand side, then the distribution is skewed to the left. Now you might be thinking, okay, what does that actually look like? I'm gonna go back two slides to show you. Sorry, more than two slides. Let's take a look at this distribution right here. So you can see, A, we have an outlier, down here, or potential outlier, I should say. We have this gap, and we can kind of see that our distribution peaks right here, and then it sort of tails off on the right side. So we would call this distribution roughly skewed to the right, because again, most of our data is on the left-hand side, and then as we get to the right, it kind of tails off. And so the reverse is true for something that's skewed to the left. All the data is on the right and the tail comes to the left. So we talked about skewed right, we talked about skewed left. Next is symmetry. So we as statisticians really like symmetry because it tells us um, a very clear center of the distribution. And symmetry kind of looks like, where is it? Oh, I gotta go over here. Like this one the height of black cherry trees. So over here, we got our data and this looks roughly symmetrical. Like I was saying, you're rarely gonna have anything that's perfectly symmetrical in statistics. You're just gonna have things that are roughly symmetrical. So in your response, and again, we're gonna look at two data sets, uh, an AP problem and look at two data sets and compare them to see um, the roughly symmetrical nature rather than perfect symmetrical. So symmetry looks like that, where you could kind of flip one side and the other, and it would be the same. I wanna to get to the last S of cuss, which is spread. Um, this can sometimes be the most difficult part for students to answer because there are so many ways that we measure spread in AP stats. So the first and most obvious way is just the range. This is probably something you learned in middle school where you take the maximum and subtract it from the minimum and you have your range. That is one way on the AP exam that you can talk about spread and they'll give you full credit. Another thing they like to talk about is the IQR. And essentially what the IQR is, is the inner quartile range. So if you think of the word inner, right, it's everything in the middle. Quartile means quarters. So it's the inner quarters and it's the range of them. So it's from Q1 to Q3. So it's whatever that range is. It excludes the maximum and the minimum. So the IQR is that middle. And the IQR is really easy to see in a box and whisker plot. So I'm gonna go back a couple slides and show you the IQR here. So if you look at these two corporations and their yearly salaries, the IQR is gonna be this middle box right here. And the IQR is gonna be the middle box right here. Now, that's going to be important because sometimes one IQR might be skewed or symmetrical while the other one is uh, skewed or symmetrical. So we sometimes like to compare the IQRs. So we got range, we got IQR. We have these two down here that are really, really tough for students 
sometimes. And that's standard deviation. So standard deviation literally means the average distance every data point is from the average. So that's a lot of averages that I said and two students get to get caught up in that. So I'll say it one more time. It's the average distance every data point is from the average. It's a good way to measure how spread out your data is. Variance is almost identical to standard deviation. It's just your standard deviation squared. So if we took our standard deviation, multiplied it by itself, we would get the variance. We don't use standard or variance very much in AP stats. As you move up in statistics in college, uh, in your master's program, you're gonna use variance a little bit more. But for this class, we mainly focus on standard deviation. Oh, I meant to talk about these two. That's right. So unimodal is kind of what I talked about with the flat. There are no peaks. So every single thing is the same. And if you go back to the cherry trees, it would be like if every single cherry tree, we had the same height across all. So six cherry trees had this height, six had this height, six had that height. So if it's all just kind of flat, that's unusual. And we'd want to say, hey, there are no peaks here. We talked about center, we talked about unusual, we talked about shape, we talked about spread. Now let's dive into our actual problem. 